but it's um gold yeah anyway yeah how are you? that i i'm doing really well i i really enjoyed the movie uh we're, we're here with jim cummings and pj mccabe writer directors stars of the beta test a uh, hilarious uh dark comedy thriller about an increasingly paranoid hollywood agent um so I, I'd love to uh, use the, the off-camera argument you guys just had to segue into some uh, thoughts about your collaboration, you know, conceiving the idea together, writing it together, and uh, being friends. Yeah. So, oh, should we just go? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So PJ and I met in college, and uh, he was in the acting program. I was in the directing program. And so he learned a lot about acting and I didn't. And then I, <laughs> I learned a lot about cameras and he didn't. And so together we make one good director for this movie. Um, but we had been like working together for years, writing together for years, and then like directing short films. And then PJ was always helpful in the writing process for all of my other features. And then we had this idea together about this kind of modern adultery um, service. And, uh, and it was just this kind of like thing that was making us laugh and it was poignant to us. And we're just like, all right, well, let's write it and direct it and act in it and fuck it. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we basically came together uh, putting all these ideas together and uh, yeah, constructed this really kind of crazy idea about data gathering and how you could find technically your search history soulmate uh, and what that would look like to actually get a uh, kind of a spam letter in the mail promising something amazing. And it's actually true <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you went through with it. So the guy, the guy gets a letter in the mail in a purple envelope inviting him to a no strings attached sexual encounter in a hotel room and he goes and it's really incredible. There's like this beautiful girl who's there uh, and it works, but then he never gets another letter and it drives him crazy. And uh, so we had this idea of like, even in the best case scenario, like even if it was like this clean getaway for this adulterous affair that was wonderful, you'd still hate it. Like it, there is no good uh, outcome. Outcome. Of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the, yeah. the grass always seems like it's greener on the other side, and, and really it's not. Yeah. And even though you might have found someone who's technically better paired for you through algorithms, uh, it's still going to be hell because yeah. you're going to have to go against the person, you know, that you're technically with and to put a lot of work in with. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was interesting to us, that whole dynamic. It's a very ripe metaphor for the perils of modern dating and romance. Sure, sure. Yeah, and then we, we knew that we were making this movie about cheating and lying, and so we had to set it in Hollywood as well. So it was like, it's very <laughs> apropos to what's going on in, in, in the film world right now. Right, so what, what were your um, goals in terms of kind of uh, uh, ribbing at or attacking the... Uh, Hollywood agent scene and also um, the kind of uh, data mining internet culture to really hot button social justice subjects. Yeah, with, with Hollywood, it was just funny to us. And like, I hadn't, it was always in the news. Like there were always Hollywood Reporter articles and articles about the WGA and the producing fight. And um, it, it seemed to be this enormous fight that was happening that could literally change the landscape of the future of Hollywood. And the WGA didn't have to put up this fight, but they did. It was like a really honorable, crazy thing to do for a union. Um, and I'm so glad they did. And they kind of won. They got to, to a negotiation and it, it worked out. But it, if they hadn't put up the fight, the bad guys would have just taken over. It would have been like the Death Star, you know, winning. And, um, and so we wanted to do something about supporting independent filmmakers and, and storytellers and creators. And so we knew that that was just something that we could do. If we tried to do it the Hollywood system, it would have taken us 10 years and people would have said, you know, yeah, no never way. never would have gotten made. Yeah. And so we ran the WeFunder campaign. It's like crowdfunding campaign to get the film made. Um, we completely circumvented the Hollywood system. We made it entirely in secret. And um, I, I guess one of the quotes from the movie that we really think is poignant of like about the ribbing of somebody is that we're not insulting them, we're describing them. And like, that's something that just doesn't happen. People are so terrified to even describe what is happening uh, in Hollywood that um, they become intimidated and so they don't do it. And then with the data mining thing, it just kind of worked out perfectly. We got to do the fun kind of social network description of like how we're all victims of these giant corporations and how any lone wolf could come in and scrape that data and then screw over your life and how toxic and terrifying that is and it works kind of well because you know the internet being kind of the thing that kills the middleman 
uh, kind of made the themes run pretty nicely together uh, to tie everything into our strange modern world we're running through right now. Yeah. yeah. And like what representation means of like, if, if this guy's a terrible, he's terrible at representing himself. I don't know how he represents <laughs> any of his clients, uh, but like that, that is a world that is changing because of IMDb Pro, where like you can get in touch with anybody. So these older systems are kind of becoming less useful. And, um, and to watch somebody go through that and realize that stuff um, is really funny in this kind of comedy of panic way. A guy who's already losing control of his life to now have to deal with this insane data mining letter system was just the perfect landscape to watch someone fall apart even more. <laughs> yeah. And that was, that was funny to us. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, speaking to Natalie Metzger before you guys, and she mentioned that you did a lot of research, uh, especially reaching out to like interns or uh, assistants in Hollywood to get kind of material for the film. And I, before that, I wasn't sure if this was like, you know, a cathartic based on some experiences you've had. So I'm, I'm curious what, uh, if there's a mix or what uh, inspiration was there? No, actually, our experience has been wonderful. Agents are great. And um, uh, yeah, they're, they're really uh, smart. They all know what they're talking about. Um, but no, we did actually bring in uh, 11 different members of the agency world during the WGA packaging fight um, to tell us what it was like on the inside. And it was weird where like I tweeted about it being like, hey, I'm wondering if anybody like, and I got so many responses and DMs of like, actually a friend, my roommate comes home and complains about it all the time. She might want to talk to you about it. So like we had these kind of quiet secretive meetings in cafes and restaurants and phone calls and then two people were like here's you know my boss's mailbox <laughs> just like sent us a data dump uh and and we're like okay this is kind of crazy but then also the sony hacks like the sony hacks have so much information about how the sausage is made um and we, we found that to be very useful as well um yeah we we talked to everybody because as soon as we realized the movie was going to be about the agency world which was like after the first draft of the script, the first draft was 55 pages. We're like, well, we actually don't know what it's like on the inside. I can, I can have conjecture, but we should fucking talk to these people who have to work inside of this scary, uh, toxic work environment. Another thing Natalie Metzger mentioned is the uh, familial aspect of uh, production at Vanishing Angle and working with you guys, because you guys are all friends. So I'm curious how that manifests in the writing process. And because the movie really feels like you guys are trying to make each other laugh and really appeal to each other's sensibilities, so. Yeah, we have this kind of like Trey Parker, Matt Stone relationship of like what, whatever's actually making us laugh and not like what's supposed to be funny. Um, and so we write a lot in writer duet where it's like a Google doc, but you can see it in real time changing, but it's in screenplay format. And so like, he'll write something in, and then if I laugh at it, he's like, okay, cool, that's staying in the script. Um, but we do it all out loud, like for beta test, because there's so much shouting in it, we're lucky to have the Vanishing Angle offices because we had a room that was separated where I could do the mea culpa in the parking lot and scream and shout. And we almost had security called on us once, <laughs> uh, but we do it all out loud and then write down the best improv basically. So like it's all done out loud. Every scene we kind of workshop, we have a big treatment in a Google doc and then we transcribe that to screenplay format and act out the scenes and write down the best ways that the scenes can go. Um, so it, it is very familial. Like, and then, and then once we have a first draft of the script, we record it as a podcast and then send it to Matt and Natalie and Ben, our producers. And like, I think this is kind of how we want it to, to, to be. Um, and that's been really helpful. Everybody has great input and throughout the entire process too. Like I edit the movies, but we have screenings for basically anybody in the offices that wants to see the process. It's super important to me to like send the ladder back down because there are filmmakers in our midst who happen to be production assistants on this movie and opening the editing room so that it's more of a public event. Like if somebody has a good idea for an edit and it makes the movie 1% better, we'll take it, Yeah, you know? I mean, I think we have to have these conversations with our friends because if Jim and I, I feel like a lot of our ideas <laughs> and yeah, kind of movies and TV show concepts are pretty like pretty insane and <laughs> pretty stressed. So we kind of have to, Yeah, it's good to talk to our friends to kind of check and be like, is this ridiculous? Like how yeah. I kind of hone our crazy ideas before as we put them into screenplay format. Yeah. So uh, can you make a movie that's like Chinatown about face sitting? It will that work? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. yeah, where, um, where, yeah, how far can we go here? So it makes narrative sense. Um, and uh, yeah, that goes for a lot of our stuff that yeah. we're working on, <laughs> but yeah. 
it did really uh, feel like an original tonal balance. Um, there were definitely echoes of uh, the player and um, kind of some Safety Bros energy in terms of the, the thriller aspect. But uh, the drama moments especially really uh, had a unique um, tone to them. So I'm curious what maybe inspirations or references were. Or... I mean, we love David Fincher. We call him Uncle Dave. Uh, <laughs> it's like all the time on set when there was like a very like spooky Fincher-esque shot, I'm like, oh, Uncle Dave's going to love this. Yeah. Uh, but like the entire opening is so graphic and so like girl with the dragon tattoo. Um, and then a lot of the dramatic elements, like PJ's a huge fan of Chinatown and yeah. like, we, we tried to make stupid Chinatown of like this dumb character doing the detective pornography stuff. Yeah. Um, just like the, the dynamics of things like Zodiac and Chinatown, it's so detailed. Like it, it's so well thought out from start to finish. And so I mean, wanted so badly to make uh, an investigation in a world that was so detailed, but make it funny, <laughs> I mean, yeah. make it ridiculous about yeah. this kind of weird letter system leading you down the rabbit hole uh and yeah it was like can we make goofy chinatown yeah like, that's detailed I think, as that i yeah. think that's that's kind of like how we started like having the engine of the story be the detective story and the kind of like you know the sexy erotic thriller kind of thing and then making jokes about the movie inside of the movie a little bit like um and then like parasite as well tonally parasite is very funny and also very graphically violent and a weird story about something important and so like we, we just, you know, looked at the detective stories that we loved and then it was like, how do we make this bullshit? How can we like insert some dumb stuff into it yeah, as well? Yeah, and we all learned something along the way. That's right, <laughs> and we all learned something along the way. Yeah. How does the beta test feel like a uh, evolution or continuation of your previous work? How does it fit into your of PJ, I guess, more in terms of acting, um, Jim, in terms of directing? Um. I think the beta test is probably the last movie where I'll scream a lot in a parking lot. I think that's like the yeah. end of the trilogy of me uh, screaming a yeah. bunch. Oh, yeah, I say that now. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. I think it's about watching this stressful dude um, kind of lose grip on reality and what's important in life. And so because of that, it's kind of close to my other characters, my other movies. Um, but we love watching the kind of pressure cooker comedies like for minutes the series of long take short films that pj and i did um pj's character is like a host in a restaurant and there's literally spinning plates that he has to like juggle throughout and in in a funny way like we wanted to do uncut gems as like a slapstick comedy almost about dumber characters um and so yeah i guess it's just a, a continuation of like us using editing as a as a practice like thunder road is like 10 shots or something like that it's like there's just it's such so many long takes in that goddamn movie and then wolf of snow hollow we got to do some of the detective pornography uh fun montage editing and then i was like oh my god editing is an art form like you can you can use a, an, a montage and like cut these things together and like the lake arrowhead scenes in beta test feel very like terrence malick and it kind of like becomes a Malick movie, like, you know, three quarters of the way through. Um, and it works. I don't know. There was like, there were so many things that we got to play with cinematically uh, that was just different and, and wild and exciting. And um, yeah, we, yeah, we kind of pulled out all the tricks with this one. But yeah, I think Malick style pacing might be something to investigate for the next one. Yeah, <laughs> this movie gonna, is like yeah. a breakneck yeah. mile a minute kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, might lean into some kind of longer, softer moments. <laughs> yeah, for, it's for, definitely the fastest the paced movie one. that we've yeah. made. Yeah. And where do you feel that maybe leading you down the road? Was there a particular lesson you learned from this that you would do differently on a, your next film or? Yeah, I mean, mo I mean, it's 93 minutes, and there's so much jam packed in it. Um, PG and I are writing something right now about it's a Victorian horror movie, broadly, it's about a bunch of other stuff, too. But uh, I guess we're like more inspired by like, there will be blood and like Ghibli movies, um, where you can just sit on a moment and be with a character and they don't have to be talking about something. I think we're gonna have some of the characters shut up in our next movie. Yeah, so that'll be nice. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure the fans will be happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Might have some quiet, lingering moments, yeah, instead of just yelling at the camera. Yeah, the camera. <laughs> the entire fucking movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there will be some of that, too. Probably. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, well, uh, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to talk to me, guys. Um, and uh, I wish you uh, best of luck with the rest of the festival circuit. Um, any last details you want to share about the movie or... Uh, 
Mm, it's coming exactly. out with IFC in November in theaters, which is crazy. And then it's at Tribeca and Berlin this week and next week. Um, PJ and I are going to Berlin, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, IFC is putting it out in theaters and it's a really fun movie to watch with a crowd because it's really uncomfortable and very funny and very terrifying. <laughs> We're really excited about it. <laughs> we're all excited oh, we're yeah, all excited we're all, yeah so so let's keep, well, let's keep talking yeah cool. okay great <laughs> thank you Dylan. okay thanks so much yep. man take it easy take care guys hey this is eric from myoncinema.com if you want to support us subscribe below for more reviews interviews film festival coverage from sundance Cannes, toronto you want to check out these guys on this side